thanks for uh, having me here. Uh, so as, as Catherine said, my doctoral research at uh, CMU was partially supported by a fellowship from Samson. And, and uh, as a graduate student, I uh, learned a lot by, by interacting with folks at the Memory Solutions Lab uh, at Samsung. So hopefully uh, today's uh, talk uh, will also be an opportunity for us to interact and uh, for, for us to learn more about uh, interesting things happening at Samsung as well. Uh, so a general theme of uh, the, the research that we are pursuing at, at Georgia Tech uh, has been on tailoring uh, next generation uh, data management systems for emerging hardware technologies. Um, so in today's talk, uh, I will be focusing primarily on uh, non-volatile memory technologies or persistent memory technologies. Uh, probably many of you are already aware of it, but I figured that a quick introduction would be helpful to kind of set the stage for uh, the rest of the talk. Um, uh, and and uh, uh, the ideas that I'll be presenting in today's uh, talk uh, will also hopefully generalize to other memory and storage technologies like 3D NAND and key value store SSDs uh, and, and so on and so forth. Um, so uh, I will be giving a high level overview of the research that uh, I've been doing over the last like five years. And, and, and later I will present a, a, a new talk a new body of work that we have been pursuing in the last couple of years on multi-tier buffer management. Uh, this is actually joint work with uh, uh, Krishna uh, at, at Samsung. Uh, so this is again something that kind of uh, was inspired by uh, my interactions with folks in the Memory Solutions Lab. Uh, so this uh, work, we also collaborate with uh, Interlabs. So they have been like providing this opt-in uh, DIMMs uh, and, and kind of uh, uh, helping us uh, figure out the unique characteristics of these technologies and how we have to dial our database systems for it. I will also kind of allude to how uh, classical machine learning techniques can actually be used in uh, systems, in uh, these data systems. Um, so that's also something that uh, ho I hope uh, you will find interesting. So I, uh, Catherine mentioned that this might not be as interactive as I would uh, like it to be. But, but please please feel free to like uh, write your questions at any point in chat. I'll pause to take questions during the talk. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be, it'd be great if we could make it a little bit more interactive, uh, even within the constraints that we have, right? Great. Uh, so this uh, uh, timeline, uh, actually, this, this shows the timeline of uh, the evolution of memory technology over the last several uh, decades. Uh, so we have DRAM that came across in the 1960s. And, and right now in the, in the last decade, we are kind of at a unique point in this timeline with the advent of uh, non-volatile memory technologies. Uh, so uh, this kind of gives us an unique opportunity uh, to redesign software systems from first principles because it's pretty hard for technologies to kind of disturb the market as, as you know very well. Um, so, I will refer to persistent memory or non-volatile memory or storage class memory as just NVM uh, in this talk. Um, so uh, from a high level standpoint, this uh, uh, the main characteristics of NVM are twofold. So, so database systems have always been tailored for addressing uh, the trade-offs between the, the performance and durability trade-offs between volatile and non-volatile uh, devices. So you can do fast uh, reads and writes uh, to data on DRAM, uh, but all the data uh, is lost in case of a uh, power failure, right? Uh, so to ensure the durability of data, you have to write it out to a solid state disk or a hard disk uh, drive, uh, but you can only access data on, an, uh, on these devices at block granularity, right? So that is this trade-off from uh, performance and durability uh, dimensions. So NVM or non-volatile memory kind of uh, bridges the gap uh, between these technologies in that it supports fast uh, um, byte addressable reads and writes, uh, probably not exactly at the byte granularity, but pretty fine grain granularity. Uh, however, uh, all the writes are actually like persistent. Uh, so it, it, that, that's what makes it interesting because it kind of shares the key characteristics of both DRAM and SSD. Um, 
So this table summarizes the high level characteristics of NVM uh, devices. Uh, so let's first look at uh, device latency. Um, so unlike SSDs, uh, performance of NVM technologies are much closer to DRAM. Uh, so at least within an order of magnitude. So for a long, long time, these were like approximate numbers, but with real opt-in DIMMs from Intel, these are like pretty uh, uh, representative numbers. And, and going forward, this might even get better, okay? Um, so NVM also supports fine-grained access to data, similar to DRAM. Um, maybe not exactly at cache lane level granularity, uh, but pretty close to that, okay? So that's another important property that we would want to exploit in our uh, algorithms and data structures. Um, from a durability standpoint, um, it is actually similar to SSD. So all the data is durable. Uh, it has sufficient number of write cycles for uh, a write endurance cycles, even for enterprise usage. Um, and it supports a high uh, capacity uh, because of inherent, I guess, density characteristics of the underlying technology. Uh, so it's, it's denser and also uh, less expensive compared to DRAM. So the cost per GB of NVM is uh, in between DRAM and SSD. So with this unique uh, set of uh, characteristics, uh, we think that NVM uh, will be a game changer for uh, data systems, okay? Uh, so that's the premise of this work. Um, so in addition to this high level abstract properties, there have been several promising NVM related developments over the last uh, five years uh, that kind of uh, uh, forecast the widespread uh, impact of uh, NVM, uh, at least the potential for widespread impact of NVM. Uh, so uh, JEDEF, the semiconductor uh, standardization body, has published uh, the design specifications for different uh, NVDM technologies, for instance. Uh, the latest uh, versions of major operating systems like uh, Linux and Windows have uh, uh, native support for NVM. Um, uh, techniques like DAX have been added in Linux to support fast access to these devices. Uh, and then there's architectural support as well. So Intel has released a bunch of new assembly instructions, uh, some of which I will get to later in this talk uh, for managing data on uh, NVM. And, and lastly, Intel has actually started shipping these NVM DIMMs for the last uh, two or three years, I guess. So these are codenamed as Optane Data Center DIMMs. Um, and uh, um, in general, I think that this shows that this technology is um, at least ready for enterprise usage uh, in, in enterprise settings. So from, uh, from the database world, uh, players like uh, SAP HANA and Oracle have also started investigating how these uh, uh, this technology can kind of power their appliances um, for getting higher performance, especially higher price performance, uh, which, which I'll get to later in this talk, okay? Um, <clears throat> so the last 50 years of uh, data systems research has kind of been grounded in a few fundamental design assumptions. So uh, we have always assumed that memory is uh, separate uh, from storage. Um, and that compute is significantly faster than storage. Uh, and that random operations are significantly slower than sequential operations when we are uh, dealing with non-volatile storage. All of these assumptions are uh, kind of uh, no longer completely true, uh, so to speak, with uh, NVM technologies. Uh, they are still to some extent with the first generation NVMs that we have, but the balances have completely shifted uh, with NVM. Okay, uh, so, so the main uh, problem that we want to tackle uh, in this work is to figure out how to efficiently and effectively manage data on non-volatile memory. Uh, and this is uh, interesting and, and also challenging because of the unique properties of NVM. Uh, so all uh, the most of the prior work done in the space has kind of, uh, been uh, tailored for DRAM and uh, an SSD hierarchy or a DRAM and a hard disk drive hierarchy. So with NVM, I think we have to kind of revisit this problem from past principles, okay? Um, so in this uh, uh, work, we kind of uh, explored the impact of uh, persistent memory across all the layers of uh, a database system. Uh, so we designed a new uh, system called Peloton at CMU for doing this research. 
And uh, even uh, at Georgia Tech, we are kind of using uh, a platform like this for exploring other ideas. Uh, so this body of work has shown that we have to adapt all the layers of the stack from the bottom up. Uh, we have to come up with new logging and recovery protocols. Um, to, we can actually like leverage the properties of NVM. Uh, we have to redesign the storage manager, uh, the storage engine architectures uh, from first principles. Uh, you can come up with novel uh, indexing structures uh, that are actually like persistent. Um, and there's a lot of work in that space. And, and lastly, from a query processing standpoint as well, if you are building a memory centric uh, data system, we can actually like uh, leverage the unique properties of uh, persistent memory uh, and, and get really good performance at a much less, uh, much lower cost by, by kind of re, uh, re, re visiting the assumptions that we have been making in all of these components. Uh, so most of this work has been done in the last five years uh, but in today's talk, I'll actually be talking about more recent work that was done in the last one or two years um, on multi-tier buffer management. So uh, this is actually also uh, where we use uh, techniques from uh, uh, the world of machine learning uh, to kind of uh, eliminate some of the hardcore heuristics that we often use in uh, uh, software systems. Um, so this is uh, again, joint work with Intel Labs and, and many of the ideas in this work was shaped by previous interactions with folks at Samsung. Um, yeah. So let's, let's focus on the high level problem. Um, so our goal is to design a buffer manager for a multi-tier storage hierarchy with uh, DRAM, uh, persistent memory and uh, SSD, okay. so. So traditionally, uh, buffer managers have often been designed for a two-tiered uh, storage hierarchy uh, with only uh, uh, DRAM and disk. Right? So uh, in this case, uh, things are much simple. Uh, so to modify any piece of data, you have to bring the data from uh, disk to DRAM uh, before you can operate on it. And then you also have to write it back to disk. Uh, to make sure that it is uh, persistent. Uh, now, uh, this kind of a data migration policy, uh, wherein you always have to move uh, data from uh, uh, disk to DRAM, we refer to that as eager migration, right? because you are eagerly moving the data out to DRAM um, to make these modifications. So it's really eager because you always have to move it DRAM, we never have a choice, right? We can't directly modify data on disk. Uh, so uh, from a storage system design standpoint, so that's another important problem, right? So how do you provision a storage system given a cost budget uh, in an enterprise setting? Um, uh, how do you actually like uh, distribute the money across the different tiers of the storage hierarchy to kind of maximize the performance that you observe for your target application? So in this case, the target application is a database system. Um, so the high level rule of thumb uh, has been that uh, you want to maximize DRAM capacity, like spend a lot of money on DRAM because uh, uh, caching the hot data, the really hot data, like the uh, the root nodes in a B plus tree and, and uh, other critical tables in the buffer pool uh, go a long way in improving the overall performance of the database system, okay? So from a data migration policy standpoint, uh, you wanna go with eager migration. And from a storage system design standpoint, um, a rough uh, rule of thumb from a DevOps standpoint is to spend uh, uh, money to maximize DRAM capacity, right? Now with a three-tier uh, 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 storage hierarchy with DRAM, NVM, and disk, things get more interesting. Uh, so the introduction of NVM into this storage hierarchy uh, also introduces a lot of additional uh, data paths in the hierarchy, right? Uh, I have highlighted the ones that are now newly added uh, in this figure, like one, two uh, is basically the CPU directly accessing data on uh, the NVM DIMMs using, uh, and also like persisting the data using these new assembly instructions from Intel. Um, and then there is this data migration between uh, DRAM and NVM. So uh, to and fro, so that is represented by the third and fourth arrows. 
And lastly, you have data migration between disk and NVM. Um, so that's represented by the fifth and sixth arrows, okay? So there are all these new data flow paths in the three-tier three hierarchy that, that makes this problem uh, very interesting. So in a two-tier setting, we only have to worry about two problems, essentially. So uh, what data are you going to move from DRAM to disk, maybe to save space, right? So which, which pages do you want to evict? What data do you want to evict? And then when do you want to actually evict those pages, right? Like you uh, can evict them uh, at any given point in time. So those are the two questions. What data do you want to evict? And uh, when do you want to evict them? Now with a three-tier uh, storage hierarchy, uh, it is more interesting. So in addition to these two questions, the third question that arises is that of where do we want to evict this piece of data? Do we want to evict it out to the NVM buffer? For instance, if the piece of data is on DRAM, do you want to evict it to the NVM buffer or do you want to directly evict it out to disk? So besides what and when, we also have this question of where, which tier in the storage hierarchy do you want to migrate data to? Um, yeah, so that's actually something that we uh, have to tackle because of the introduction of NVM. So the two interesting um, problems uh, that that uh, we can uh, uh, revisit from this perspective, like uh, so, the first one is that of data migration policy. Uh, so with this uh, setup, uh, how do you actually like uh, migrate data uh, to maximize the performance of the overall database system? Uh, now, the naive solution, the baseline would be to go with a completely eager policy. Uh, so you can, whenever a piece of data is uh, requested, you migrate it from, and let's say it's not there in the DRAM buffer and the NVM buffer, uh, you migrate the page from disk to the NVM buffer, and then you migrate it from the NVM buffer to the DRAM buffer, and you operate on it. Right? And then again, when you want to send it back to disk, you uh, move it first from DRAM to NVM, and then NVM to disk. So those are the arrows that are highlighted, right? Now, this clearly is not a very effective use of NVM, uh, mainly because uh, the, there is essentially going to be a lot of uh, inclusivity between the buffers in uh, the DRAM buffer and the NVM buffer. So the same data is going to be there in both of these buffers. So the extra space in NVM is not really being used if you go with this naive uh, data flow uh, data migration policy. Um, and, and the second problem is that of tuning this data migration policy. Uh, so with the two tier storage hierarchy, there was no real choice. You always had to eagerly migrate data from uh, disk to DRAM. And, and uh, when you want to make space, you evict the cold data out from DRAM to disk. But with a three tier storage hierarchy, it is uh, more uh, interesting. Uh, you have all these new data flow paths. So how do you tune this policy uh, for a given workload uh, and a given storage hierarchy? Uh, that is a, a open problem essentially it's because uh, it, it depends on the characteristics of the workload, right? Is it going to be a, a transaction processing application or is it going to be a purely analytics application or, you, or it's going to be a hybrid application where you want to do both transactions and analytics on the same piece of data something like business intelligence or, or stock market trading, for instance. Um, so depending on the read-write mixture of the workload and also the capacity of the different devices, like the, the size of the DRAM buffer, the size of the NVM buffer, and the hard disk uh, capacity or the solid state disk capacity, uh, this policy will have to be adapted. And that's essentially where, I guess, machine learning comes in. Uh, as we will see in a, in a few slides. So that's the first problem. Um, yeah, so the next problem is that of uh, storage system design. As I already mentioned, uh, given a cost budget uh, from, a, from a DevOps standpoint, you want to spend money on, on the different devices in, in the uh, storage hierarchy. 
now how much money do you want to invest in dram how much money do you want to invest on nvm that's that's a very pragmatic question in fact this was one of the questions that i got from uh, a, a, a tech talk at samsung in grad school <laughs> so uh, uh, yeah so we also try to answer this question in this uh, uh, work uh, and again this is also like a problem from a tuning standpoint so this decision is not like just one decision uh, that we had in case of a two tier hierarchy this is more, more uh, subtle question and the answer depends on uh, the the price point of these different technologies and also the target workload as we will see uh, one of the reasons why nvm uh, might actually be adopted uh, in the long run uh, is because of its hopefully lower price point compared to dram so uh, this paper actually uh, was recently accepted at sigmod 2021 uh, like buffer management for volatile and non volatile memory <clears throat> so uh, our the main goal of this uh, work is to optimize the data migration policy and and storage system design for persistent memory from first principles okay so so our nvm our buffer manager um uh, we we take an nvm centric design here so our main goal is to leverage these additional data flow paths uh introduced by nvm in the storage hierarchy and and also try to lower the overall storage system cost using nvm so that we can uh, deliver better price performance to users uh, especially in uh, uh, scale up uh, solutions like uh, uh, sap and oracle so uh, the key techniques that we i guess uh, uh, introduce in this work are threefold so one we we found that a, a lazy approach to migrating data to dram actually works well for uh, many workloads uh, so unlike the classical setting where we always have to eagerly move data to dram here you could take a more i guess lazier approach uh, to moving data and the second idea is to optimize this policy uh using machine learning so this whole thing is automated to some extent uh, uh and so you don't have to like as a as a, uh, a system administrator you we don't have to carefully like tune this knob uh for every particular like uh, storage system or uh workload and and lastly uh, we also design a simple recommender system for finding the optimal uh storage system for a given uh workload and cost budget so this can actually be used by uh, a devops uh, person to figure out how to uh, best distribute the resources across the different tiers of the storage hierarchy for their target application so the nvm linear data paths uh, let's let's uh, look at them again uh, so the the most interesting ones are highlighted in red color uh, so the the two key ideas are uh, with nvm we could actually like uh, bypass um dram uh during reads and writes uh by directly reading accessing the data on nvm right and and the same way uh we could also skip nvm when we are migrating data from disk so you could just directly move the data from disk to dram which is always which is typically what we do right now right so you could directly read and write data by bypassing nvm so those are the two red paths on the bottom uh, left okay so those are the nvm related data flow paths that we want to reason about right so you can bypass dram or you can bypass nvm in this case so the first two paths are for bypassing dram during a read operation or a write operation respectively the same case for nvm it's the uh, third and fourth parts okay so let's look at this notion of eager versus lazy data migration this makes it easy for us to think about this problem um so with eager migration when you want to read a piece of data you always immediately move the data from nvm to dram um right so that's basically the second data flow part with lazy migration you just skip it uh so maybe the first time it's accessed you directly read it from nvm and the second time it's accessed you just serve the re, uh, operation from nvm and maybe the third time it's accessed you figure out that hey this is a hot piece of data so we might want to move it to dram right so you lazily migrate the data uh, like a page 
essentially from NVM to DRAM uh, when when needed. So that is essentially related to bypassing DRAM during reads. Okay. So we can uh, now, I guess, take a formalize this problem uh, a little bit more precisely so that we can reason about different policies. Um, so this is one of the main, I guess, contributions of this work. Uh, so we kind of reason about this from a probabilistic standpoint. Uh, so you can think of uh, the probability of migrating a page to a, a particular device buffer uh, by, by P. Um, so when P is one, essentially it's an eager policy. And when P is less than one, uh, it, it essentially is like a wide spectrum of lazy policies, right? So when P is zero, essentially you never migrate it essentially. So that's like the degenerate case. Um, so if you move a page from NVM to DRAM here, uh, every 10th time it is being accessed, right? Uh, then you can think of that probability as 0.1, okay? Um, uh, in contrast with the eager policy, when you immediately like move it from NVM to DRAM every single time, the probability is one. Okay, so that's basically what we kind of capture with this probability uh, metric. And and now with this uh, formalization, we can uh, uh, think of the data migration policy as a collection of four such probabilities. Uh, so uh, there are two probabilities associated with uh, whether you want to bypass DRAM. Uh, during reads and writes, so that's P1 and P2. And then same way for NVM, uh, you have a couple other numbers, P3 and P4. So you can just think about this whole problem of where uh, to move data between the different tiers of the storage system um, by these four probability probabilities. Okay, so, uh, and then this is essentially your data migration policy for your multi-tier buffer manager that we want to actually optimize for your target application. Uh, so uh, the optimal policy actually depends on many factors. Uh, so it depends on the working set size of the application. It depends on the, the capacities of the different buffers in the storage system. And it also depends on NVM latency. So early on when I started this work, I was thinking about an abstract model for NVM. So there were many candidate NVM technologies. Uh, so because of in that case, it's even more interesting. Uh, but but now uh, with with one like really good technology uh, out there, at least uh, it is more like obvious that the other parameters are more important. But going forward, if you have multiple competing technologies for this segment, uh, I would presume that the NVM latency will also be uh, something that influences the optimal policy. So the optimal uh, policy is uh, kind of uh, uh, you have this big state space of policies, right? So you can have uh, at least it's just four probabilities but each of these probabilities are independent from each other and they can be any number from zero through one, right? So the policy tuner actually searches for the optimal policy for a given uh, storage system and application. And, and we use machine learning techniques uh, for converging to a, a global optima. There's no guarantees, but, but we found that it actually works pretty well in practice. Uh, so we have tried different techniques like more classical techniques like uh, uh, simulated annealing uh, we also like techniques like uh, gradient descent, approximate gradient descent. It, it just works at the high level. It's just a search problem, and you can, uh, as we as I guess uh, systems folks, we can use uh, any of these techniques interchange interchangeably to kind of uh, search through this state space. Uh, but it is important to not like hard code this uh, policy. Uh, it it is like sensitive to so many factors. Um, so uh, the last problem, essentially that of uh, designing a storage system, uh, we want to search across candidate storage systems. So given a cost budget, we want to find the one uh, setup that gives you maximal performance. And given a performance constraint, you want to find the system with minimal cost, right? Uh, again, similar to the data migration policy, the, the storage system design also depends on many factors. It depends on the price point and, and latency of the NVM technology and the other technologies in the storage system. It also depends on the working set size. Uh, so one uh, interesting observation that we found, at least for database workloads, uh, uh, especially like uh, uh, transaction processing workloads, we found that the first place to invest money is actually on uh, NVM, uh, not, not really DRAM, uh, mainly because of the capacity advantage of these device. Um, so 
that's one of the takeaways from this work. So the main idea is to come up, kind of come up with a hybrid uh, migration policy. So we eagerly migrate data uh, to NVM. Um, uh, when we move data from disk, we have to move it to some device, either NVM or DRAM. So we eagerly migrate data to NVM, and then we directly operate on it for a few uh, iterations before figuring out if it's important enough to migrate it to the DRAM buffer. So we have lazy uh, migration to DRAM and eager migration to NVM. So this hybrid policy helps us in improving the overall performance of the workload uh, when we compare it against a naive uh, eager policy uh, for both uh, buffers. And, and from a tuning standpoint, this probabilistic approach helps us to kind of uh, uh, compare different policies qualitatively and uh, figure out which, which one actually works well for uh, the given uh, environment. Um, and the second problem, uh, that of uh, uh, storage system design. Uh, so here again, uh, we found that uh, NVM is really helpful uh, because of its price point uh, and, and uh, the capacity advantage it has over DRAM. Okay. Uh, so by spending more money on uh, NVM, uh, we can actually like uh, improve the overall price performance of uh, the system. And also from a tuning standpoint, uh, we the, the storage system recommender, uh, we can quickly like search to a bunch of candidate storage hierarchies. So we vary the size of these buffers by, I guess, uh, factors of uh, uh, powers of two, like, like one gigabytes, like two gigabytes, uh, all the way to like one terabyte, I guess. Uh, and, and same thing for the NVM buffer. And we can kind of approximate the performance and uh, figure out what uh, works uh, well uh, for a particular like workload and cost budget. So, so in an evaluation, we evaluate this NVM aware uh, buffer manager uh, and our, our uh, evaluation seeks to answer two questions. So does the data migration policy actually help improve uh, the runtime performance of the buffer manager? Um, and, and does the storage system design actually help uh, maximize performance given the cost budget? Um, so the workload that we kind of investigated, uh, we have we evaluated many different workloads. In, so the results are there in the Sigma paper uh, that I'll be happy to share later. Um, but in this uh, talk, I'll mainly present results from TPCC, like the industry standard benchmark for transaction processing solutions. So we uh, deal with a reasonably uh, large data set, uh, uh, but like 200 gigs. But in this talk, this uh, I, I'm showing the results for a smaller data set with 20 gigs. We found that the trends are similar even uh, when, when things scale out. Um, and, and the storage system in, the, in consideration for this particular data set, we kind of go with a smaller, I guess, setup. So there's like 2.5 gigs of DRAM, uh, 10 gigs of NVM, and uh, a one terabyte SSD. Um, and you can imagine that if the data set is like 200 gigs, you could kind of scale everything up by a factor of 10. Uh, and I guess you can keep doing that. Uh, um, and, and uh, we kind of stopped with 16 worker threads. So someone was uh, earlier question we had about like the CPU becoming the bottleneck. Yeah, in this case, it is actually bottleneck by the SSD uh, at some point and, and we don't go beyond that. So we mainly present results until 16 worker threads in TPCC. So the entire uh, system is run, run in C++ and it's a multi-tier buffer management. So uh, for this evaluation, we actually used the opt-in DIMMs and SSD that were generously provided by our, our co colleagues at Intel Labs. Uh, so this, uh, is, this is real hardware. It supports all the recently added assembly instructions. In particular, one instruction that, that's interesting to note is the cache lane write back instruction uh, that I'm sure many of you are already aware of. Uh, so the CPU, you just wrote, persist some data in your CPU cache uh, using stores. Now you wanna make sure that the data is actually like persistent uh, on, on NVM. Uh, in this case, you use the cache line write back instruction instead of the typical cache line flush instruction. Uh, the, uh, so that from a cache coherence protocol standpoint, the next miss is not, next access to that cache line uh, is not going to be a miss. So you only write back uh, the data to NVM and, and that is still a copy of that data in the CPU cache uh, in, a, in a different cache coherent state. Um, so that's the main reason why we use this instruction. So this is going to be our synchronization primitive for, for NVM. So the key results, I think in this first experiment, we focus on the data migration policy. 
Um, so on the y-axis, we have the operational throughput. So the number of uh, IO operations that are supported by uh, the data, uh, uh, the buffer manager, uh, higher is better. Uh, so we compare the lazy policy against uh, the eager policy. And we kind of like uh, do it for uh, the DRAM buffer and NVM buffer uh, separately. So as I already alluded to earlier, uh, a lazy policy works better for uh, a DRAM uh, as in contrast, uh, eager policy works better for NVM. Okay, so this is the reason why we kind of go with a hybrid approach. Uh, the reasons being that uh, with DRAM, you want to make sure that only the frequently accessed data hits uh, DRAM. You don't want to pollute the uh, buffer with like data that's not uh, frequently accessed. Uh, so that's where I guess the lazy policy helps. And then uh, the eager policy to NVM is especially important for write operations because uh, uh, from a durability standpoint, uh, for log records, for instance, you want to make sure that it immediately hits NVM. Uh, so even for other, other like uh, data uh, pages, like you want to go with a eager policy uh, for NVM. So we go with like a hybrid approach for data migration. Um, so in the second experiment, we focus on storage system design. So here we are comparing two equally priced uh, storage systems, uh, one with just DRAM and NVM, uh, one with just DRAM and SSD, and the other one with just NVM and SSD, okay? So on the y-axis, we have a price performance, um, probably performance price, I guess. So it's throughput uh, divided by cost. So uh, the, the number of operations uh, per second supported by the storage system, uh, the buffer manager running on that storage system, normalized by the overall cost of the storage system. Okay, the cost for DRAM and SSD and the cost for NVM and SSD. So this is an enterprise SSD. I think it's an opt-in SSD as well. Um, and, and again, higher is better. So the main takeaway from this uh, <clears throat> experiment uh, is that uh, the NVM SSD outperforms the DRAM SSD comfortably by, by more than a factor of two. And this is very significant in an in, in, in enterprise setting. Okay. Uh, uh, more interesting observation that we found, and that was actually also like emphasized by the reviewers of this paper, was that for several important workloads in database systems, um, uh, it, it, you can actually get away with a really small DRAM buffer in front of a big NVM buffer, and, 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 and uh, you can get much better performance by doing that. Um, so you can imagine uh, uh, something like a L4 cache uh, in front of NVM, and it goes a long way for many workloads, which was kind of surprising. And I know, I know that <laughs> it it kind of like uh, uh, you can kind of eliminate the three tier buffer management problem in that case if things get collapsed to a two tier setting. Uh, but 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 that's one of the main I guess takeaways from this work. For some uh, really like uh, skewed workloads, uh, like like YCSB, uh, and also for some um, workloads that are really write intensive the DRAM buffer does help uh, because it helps hide the NVM bandwidth, the right bandwidth issues with NVM. And, and the SKU does kind of like highlight the performance difference between DRAM and NVM. And, and the last experiment here, uh, we focus on uh, the efficacy of the machine learning uh, algorithm in automatically tuning the policy uh, for a given like workload and, and storage system design. So on the y-axis, we have the operational throughput uh, again, higher is better. Uh, and on the x-axis, you have all these tuning epochs. Um, so there was a question earlier, like how do you deal with the competing workloads on the same machine in a multi-tenant setting? Uh, so here is an interesting bit later to that question. So we start with an eager policy, uh, which is like the knife straw man, and, and the, uh, uh, the policy tuner automatically goes, converges towards a hybrid policy that outperforms the eager policy by 50% with the same like hardware uh, and, and uh, just by coming up with a different data migration policy. So a surprising thing that we found was that the data migration policy is actually way more important than uh, some of the other uh, software level optimizations like fine grained uh, loading and, and things like that that were introduced in previous papers uh, late on this topic at like top tier uh, systems conferences like Sigma, DLDB, OSDI, um, so, so the data migration policy, even though it's like more simple and a humble problem, I think it's actually more important in practice. And, and uh, 
from a tuning standpoint, you want to make sure that you give enough time for the workloads, uh, the policies impact to be visible, um, uh, especially in like a complicated workload. Uh, in this case, I think we went with uh, at least uh, probably like five minutes for each epoch so that the impact of the change is clearly visible uh, so that we don't keep oscillating across different policies and uh, uh, get like unreliable performance. So the length of the tuning epoch is also another in, important uh, metric in this case. Uh, so to summarize, uh, we, we formulated and optimized the data migration policy for a multi-tier storage system in this work. Uh, we found that this approach helps lower uh, the storage cost of the overall uh, system, it also improves performance and especially like reduces the tedious uh, administrative efforts required for optimizing this policy manually by, by relying on simple machine learning techniques. Um, so I, I presented an NVM of a buffer manager in this talk, but, but in general, uh, I can see a, a lot of opportunity for redesigning data systems from first principles for not just NVM, but other uh, technologies as well, like uh, 3D NAND and key value SSD. Uh, so I hope that I will uh, probably uh, get to learn more about these technologies uh, later this week. Uh, so all of this work was done by, uh, most of it was done by uh, the graduate students uh, at the database group at Georgia Tech. So uh, I would like to thank them and also our sponsors. Um, uh, for their uh, support, especially Intel has been a key collaborative partner in this uh, work for the last uh, uh, several years. So that brings me to the end of my talk. Mm -hmm.